from Toronto. My name is John Kyo and welcome to the Future of Food 10 by 10 blockchain series. In this highly anticipated series, I will speak with 10 blockchain companies to ask them about the key challenges in the food industry from their perspectives and also about the key opportunities and where blockchain may help. And today I'm delighted to have with me the CEO of T-Food, Eric Arok Salasi. Eric, welcome. <laughs> So thank you very much. Thank you very much for the invitation today. So I, I would like to tell some words about the company, what we are doing and what I am doing in the company. So T-Food International GmbH, it's a German company. We are doing uh, food traceability on blockchain, actually since uh, four years. At the beginning, it was a centralized solution. And later, Two years ago, we decentralized the traceability the service that we are providing. I am the CEO. I am, let's say, doing everything, sales, administration, even the strategy and development strategy as well. And uh, since um, uh, that time, we have a lot of implementations in almost all continents, all over the world. So we are working in that industry, providing a good blockchain-based traceability for the food industry. Wonderful. Now, Eric, in the four years plus, because you've been in the technology sector for quite some time, uh, but in, in the past four years in particular, what do, you, what do you see as the key challenges that the food industry uh, is dealing with today? So actually, actually what we experienced, uh, even though our experiences are limited, uh, I have to tell, but the, 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 um, the experiences that we have collected in the last uh, four or five years. The first one is, um, is the market globalization. The market globalization means that a lot of uh, uh, companies and the food industry stakeholders, they are not only providing or pr producing uh, products for the local market, but for foreign markets as well. And here, here comes the compliance issue. That means they, they, the, the local regulations and the foreign regulations sometimes are different and they, they have to be compliant to be able to, to deliver or export products to the, to the bigger uh, markets or even the, the foreign markets. So this is the first challenge, the regulation issue. The second one that we have experienced here the, the, the structure of the supply chain in most cases. Uh, we think that one of the biggest challenge, we are calling it shortening the supply chain, to investigate how, how the supply chain looks like today and for that the traceability is a very important tool. And that sometime, somehow to try to shortening the supply chain, to take out the members who don't have really value added service but they, they are doing something, but uh, and mainly they are increasing the price. So the shortening the supply chain, it's a big challenge. And uh, the, the second or the third one here, the, the traceability itself. When we are talking about traceability, we are not talking about one company to solve the one company or one organization issue. It's a supply chain, different organization, different culture, different IT, different language even in a global market. And uh, to solve the traceability in a supply chain, it's not easy. It, uh, it is requiring a high level of cooperation within the supply chain. And it's a big challenge how to solve it, the cooperation. And the fourth one, except the COVID, we forget to COVID for a minute because we are talking about general challenges. And the fourth one, but we have collected the environment issues, which is a, a, a global, global question. But when we go to the food industry, so the logistical issues, the shortening the supply chain, uh, let's say uh, prioritizing the local, local producers and so on, there's a lot of, lot of environment issues as a challenge uh, is, is there as a, as, as a challenge. Gotcha. Thanks. Thanks so much for that, uh, Eric. And you mentioned uh, quite a few market globalization and compliance to regulations as a key issue, the structure of the supply chain. And quite interesting, you talked about shortening the supply chain. Then you talked about uh, traceability being a challenge and also the environmental uh, issues and uh, and logistics and so on. Now, if I, I'll come back to one of, one of those in the conversation, but moving on to the key opportunities, 
what do you see as the key opportunities in the, the food chain and how can blockchain help? So the first, first uh, opportunity or yeah, uh, let's say opportunity is, uh, is the standardization and harmonization. It's, it's required generally, but for when we are talking about traceability, it's a, it's a key factor to have standardized processes and standardized common language, digital language within the, the supply chain and in a global market. So the, uh, the standardization helps in harmonization, of course, behind the regulation, it's, uh, or the regulators are very important. But this is the most important opportunity to, to make a good standardized communication and cooperation within the supply chain. For the GS1, as a global role player in the in the standards uh, for the for the food industry as well, it's a very important uh, uh, let's say stakeholder. And of course, the, the other opportunities uh, beside that, the traceability itself is an opportunity. Let's say, um, and here comes the the let's say the packaging issue. And the, when we are talking about traceability, at the end of the day. The traceability ends in a retail package, and the retail package should be, let's say, uh, we are calling it smart packaging, not only we, but a lot of uh, um, advisors and companies are calling it uh, smart packaging. Smart packaging means that we have some identifiers on the retail package, and that retail package uh, identifier, uh, the QR code or data matrix, doesn't matter, leads the, the end customer to a landing page or web page or information page where the end buyer can collect all the information traceability and product information about the particular product so these are the, the opportunities as well and here when we are talking about the, the, the packaging and smart packaging here comes the environment again uh, like uh, like the plastic based packaging how to how to mitigate the usage of the plastic in in the in the packaging industry and in the food industry generally gotcha thank you for that now eric um so you talked about uh, standardization harmonization the importance of standards like gs1 traceability uh, packaging smart packaging and reducing plastic all very very important issues I want to go back to the key challenges that you mentioned, and we have about uh, two or three minutes left. So uh, let's talk about traceability on the challenges. What specifically are the challenges that companies are faced with on traceability that you have experienced? <clears throat> the first uh, very important uh, challenge here in the traceability is that we are calling it onboarding. Onboarding the supply chain members. Let's say there is a driver, there is a company or organization or association or even the government who decides, okay, we need the traceability within the supply chain. But the supply chain has a lot of members, different kinds of members, and how to onboard them, how to motivate them. Uh, the on onboarding has two, let's say, uh, parts. The first one is the technological onboarding. And the second one is the, is the let's say, the, the, uh, the cultural onboarding that they should give the data. And the question, a lot of time, why I should have to give the data? I, why I should have to provide the data? And the second one, how I can provide the data? So this is the onboarding issue, which is very important, and how to, how to motivate, how to give drivers, the different uh, supply chain members, to be on board and to make the traceability in a cooperative way within the supply chain. So the onboarding is one challenge in the traceability. The second challenge here, but I mentioned that it's related to the, to the packaging, uh, the serialization. I mean, when, when an end product, a food uh, a product is, uh, is made and packaged, it should have an a identifier on it. And uh, we are calling it serialization, either batch-based or individually serialized. And this is a big, big challenge. In the, in the packaging facility, in a, in a food producer, how to solve it without slowing down the actual producing speed that they are doing today. We have to give them a solution, good solution, which is fast and, and uh, let's say, um, uh, working together with the existing processes that they have and, uh, 
and that, that is a not not easy thing to do or solve. I mean, the surrealization. So actually, these these are the two big challenges. A lot of other things are there, of course, but these are the most most important ones according to our experience. Gotcha. Now we're, we've gone over the 10 minutes, uh, Eric, so I won't go into the opportunities in detail because I think you already explained it in, uh, in focusing yes. on the challenges. So in the last 30 seconds or so, if you were up in front of 50 CEOs that are startups in the food industry, what guidance would you give those CEOs who are just starting off? So actually, um, I, I think for, for um, let's say, guidance, if, if I can, uh, even give any guidance. But the first one is the operational visibility. So they should co uh, focus on the operational visibility. This is the first thing. As a, uh, the transparency is important, the credibility and, uh, and the trust at the same time. The shortening of the supply chain, again, it's an uh, it's, um, important issue or, or a, a targeted uh, uh, something at the fair trade at, at the end. So these are the four things that I would give as a guidance. Wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Uh, Eric Aroxelassi, the CEO of T-Food, one of those companies that has been in this space for over four years and has a significant footprint in deployments on most continents around the world. Eric, thank you so much for spending time with us and sharing your thoughts and wisdom. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Thank you.